Hey, 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 everybody. Hello. Welcome. It's Kanisha. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you are not new, welcome back, my loves. Welcome back. So as you can see by the thumbnail, I have fallen off a Van Island. And I wanted to talk a little bit about before we get into, I'm not doing any unboxings, but before we get into the Ban Island conversation, I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of things, three things. Why is this, why did I get come off of Ban Island? Like, why did I start shopping again? Um, what is happening abroad where you might want to consider continuing your pause? And I'm going back on break. I'm going back on Ban Island after I unbox these and do my videos and i also wanted to talk a little bit about why i think price increases will be going up i want to talk a little bit about why i think this will happen so it is a theory and as someone who again comes from a background of finance i care about more about being mindful with my money and the luxury items that i decide to splurge on with that money and the fact of the matter is I'm very particular in how I choose to spend my money as a result of the different business strategies, transactions these luxury brands have been making. So I want to break down this article that I saw in the Business of Fashion, where it definitely plays a role into my thinking why we are probably going to be seeing price increases, probably, if not this year, by some of our favorite luxury brands, then definitely next year. And I'll talk a little bit about why. And I also came across this video by another YouTuber called XOXO Akoto. I hope I pronounced your, your name right. But she has this video talking about this is exactly how much YouTube paid her for 2.1 million views. And she's someone who is young, like what I was when I started investing. And one of the themes that I've noticed on YouTube from other YouTubers, not necessarily keen on understanding the financial under implications of their money is when they talk about these, how much I made videos, I'm never hearing more about what they do with their money besides tuck it away in a savings account and say that they're saving 30%. So I wanted to play that video as well for my audience so that we could break down a little bit what do you do when you're actually getting your paychecks, side hustle or not? What do you do with your money? So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Like I said, that's one topic. I want to talk about why I came off of Ban Island is because of a couple of reasons. There were some things out there that I really desired. I saw that there's a potential for price increases on the horizon as a result of an article I read. And as a result of a video I saw regarding some financial difficulties happening abroad. So one thing to understand when it comes to luxury and money is if there are financial issues happening abroad, happening here, it will eventually impact us. If it's impacting us, it will impact somewhere globally. If it's impacting them, eventually it will spread to us. So I wanted to start with this article first by this young lady on her, her accomplishment and what she's doing with her money and how she can further her assets, in my opinion. And I'm not counting myself as a financial advisor, even though my background is finance and I happen to really love buying the finer things in life. I just really wanted to talk a little bit about what I noticed again, my observation being that people sort of stop short on talking about when they get these paychecks and their side hustles, what they do with their money. And so I just wanted to help finish that dialogue for those in their 20s who are looking and striving to eventually find their way into luxury, this video is for you. And this video can be for anybody who doesn't really know what to do with their money when it lands in their bank. This might be a way to give you some suggestions or ideas for what you do with your money.
Okay. So let me see here. I wasn't, I don't have you guys um, on my, I don't have that screen showing and I want to get the screen showing so that you can see what I'm talking about. So just give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, so let me add you. There she is, oh gosh. And let me go back to that screen. Um, All right, here we go. Why did Amazon send me $20,000? I'm gonna show you a way to potentially make money. Ah, this is driving me insane. To make a lot of money, you don't need to be a genius. You just need to remember a few no. things. Ramit Sethi, financial expert, the money man. New York Times bestseller. He has more than 20,000. Tap into the video. All right, here we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, you guys are good. So, hello, V Giles, Unshakable Star. <laughs> Just came from Crafting Dreams event here in New York City. Good for you, girl. Did you buy anything? I heard about it. <laughs> I've been buying other things. So couldn't make it down there. And it was a shame too, because I was just in New York City seeing my best friend, but it is what it is. We can only do one thing at a time sometimes. Okay. So again, I want to talk about what we do with our money when we get it. Okay, so this girl, oh my gosh, guys, I'm so sorry I didn't have her added. So this is XOXO. You guys know I love the XOXOs. Akuto, I hope I'm saying her name right. And she recently went viral. Congratulations on her video. Um, and then she did a follow-up video to that viral video talking about how much YouTube paid her. And I find that these conversations stop short. <gasps> Girl, no, you didn't. We're twins. Oh my God. I can't stand it. How is it we're constantly twins? Uh, is it the black and white? Stop, stop interrupting me, B Giles. Stop it. <laughs> is it black and white? Because I have one. You, I, you guys have just never seen it. All right. So let's get into the conversation because I can co constantly have these side conversations when you guys get into the comments. But drop your comments as we have this conversation and tell me that you are doing these things, yes or no, one in the chat, I'm on it, sis. <laughs> two in the chat, two in the chat, um, show me more, tell me what to do, tell me, sis, tell me, and, and we will. All right, so what do you do with your money when you get paid? Tell me that you know what you're doing. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Bank accounts, my bank accounts, and social media, things like that. And for every 1,000 views on my videos. So after figuring out how much my channel is worth, how much I'm going to get after every click and things like that, I do get a nice check from YouTube every month around the 21st. They say that it's the 21st through the 28th, but I get paid mostly on the 21st, unless that's a weekend. So in order to actually get paid, 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 you do have to hit a threshold of $100 to get a check from YouTube. I know a lot of people want to be monetized as soon as possible. After monetization, if you don't have the views to get paid, you will not get paid. So you might be really excited to get monetized, 
but you're, you're probably not gonna get enough money to actually check out. That even might take you a while to actually get a check from YouTube. So, But as long as you hit $100 every month, you will get a check from YouTube. I get my checks via direct deposit um, and YouTube just kind of made that super, super easy. As a whole on my channel, since my video has gone viral for the past, like maybe five months, I have made a total of 12,000 eleven dollars and 46 cents which is again a pretty hefty amount so if you break all of that down by month i have made about twenty four hundred dollars a month on youtube alone after you've gotten your youtube paycheck and all that stuff you do have to put some aside for taxes i want everybody that is watching this video that wants to be a content creator to remember to do that you have to be able to put money aside for taxes because youtube will not do it for you so put i put about 30 percent away for taxes so when tax season comes the government can be like knock knock you owe us money and i have that money ready for them to go next i'm going to tell you guys how much exactly i've made on youtube as of today march 25th monthly so i went i posted that video in october of 2023 and in that month i made 576 dollars and 86 cents which is pretty good but because i did that video so late i didn't really get that much money virality didn't really count until the next month which is when i made my most amount of money which is get ready for it four thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars and fifty five cents this amount was so crazy i don't i don't think i'm ever gonna make that much money again on youtube but it was pretty cool to have this much money in my account um, a couple of days later i was so so excited to get this again this money helped me pay my rent it made it helped me get uh, presents for my family it helped me like do fun things and things like that and of course again i had to set some money aside for taxes yes four thousand dollars forty five hundred dollars is a lot of money but after you take out rent taxes pay stuff like pay a lot of your bills that is needed at this point, this money is just generally money to live. There's really not much set aside for like a future thing or anything like that. There's not much set aside for homes and there's not much set aside for like fun or vacations or things like that. So $4,500 in one month is pretty, pretty cool. Okay. So one of the things that um, struck me about this video is how much people think forty four hundred dollars is when it's really not and i love how she talked about you know after i pay my taxes then my rent and my fun stuff then there's really not much left that's what i want to talk about is this is true which is the reason why nobody should be counting on youtube to pay their bills unless they are someone a content creator who has regularly tens of thousands of subscribers watching them consistently. Now, what I really liked about what she's talked about is she's accounting for the fact that she felt that this was a lot of money and she does not think she'll ever hit it again. And that's one misnomer I want to set and put aside. Like there will always be financial opportunities in your life. You will always have them and you will have more than one. The fact that she was able to hit this one right now, early on in her life, in her 20s, is a, a testament to the fact that she will be able to continue hitting numbers like this into the future. It may not be consistently for now until it, it suddenly is. But one strategy for building wealth that I want people to do and remember if they get money is it's not only the taxes to set aside also set aside 18 to 20 percent for investments and i know you're saying to me oh my god that's going to be 50 percent basically after i set aside 30 percent for taxes and almost 20 percent for investments i'm only going to have 50 percent left but what i'm going to tell you is one of the things i learned which was not the hard way now that i'm 20 years past being 20 i'm like i started investing at 22 i'm 42. so that's 20 years that i've been able to say hey you know thank god i'm here 
I don't have to work if I don't want to. And that's what I want for all of my luxury thrivers, people in my community. Hello. Hey, Haya. Hey, girl. Hey. I want you all to be thriving 10 to 20 years after you start working or have a plan to stop working and thrive, be able to thrive. So a lot of people would say, how in the world do you live off of 50% of the money that you made? What do you, what do you do? As a 20 year old, you don't need anything. You need nothing. As a 40 year old, now you have a mortgage. Now you have a car or, you know, if you don't have a mortgage, then you have rent. You still need shelter and a place to live. And then she talked a little bit about, she spent that money on fun things, paying her bills, but we never heard anything about the investments. And so after 50% of this money is gone, she's basically going to have $2,200 left. If she put some of more of that money into investments and as a 20 two year old, 24 year old, what do we need really? If we have no clue and idea about luxury, you, you need nothing but to continue saving your money. And one of the things that I learned about Kuto is this content creator is that she also works a regular job. So this side is really a side hustle where if she really wanted to, she could probably put away 100% of it or maybe more than 50% of it and save, skim off 30% of it to spend and splurge. And so I just found that to be really eye-opening when um, when I saw this video and I thought, and I heard her excitement around having gotten $4,400 in one month, and then it dropped back down to $500 or her average amount of income from YouTube is around $500, I thought to myself, wow, you know, um, that's not something to be excited about. We want to be excited about having the money automatedly, automatically sort of, I call it money automation, automatically funnel to the places it needs to go where you're not even thinking about it going. Because then when you get to the point in your life, and I promise you it will come where you're just done and you're ready to be done and move on and doing something else, you will have saved enough to free yourself, set yourself free. So I just wanted to play that a little bit. Um, now I wanted to move into this next article. You guys are not going to believe this. This next article that I saw around Chanel and Louis Vuitton. And I wanted to get into this because I said to myself, look, here comes some price increases. Y'all don't even know, but it's on its way based on what we are seeing coming. Not to mention this other video I'm gonna play. Mind you, the global economy is spinning out of control. And so our friends over in China and um, our luxury friends in China, I'm hearing that it's kind of empty over there. And so we need to talk a little bit about that because once our friends around the globe start having problems, as we know from the pandemic, eventually it will find our way here. So be that medically, illness, disease-wise, and financially, understand we are all living on this planet together and it all will eventually impact us. So let's talk about this article because when I tell you I couldn't believe this, I was just like, you know what? Here we go again, Chanel. Here we go again, Louis Vuitton. Here we go again, Caring, aka Gucci. I'm tired of it. So let's read this article. Chanel is in talks to purchase a building on Manhattan's Fifth Avenue, joining the competition among the world's top retailers to snap up spots on New York's iconic luxury shopping corner. <laughs> Chanel is in competition. Oh my gosh. Chanel is in discussions to buy 745 Fifth Avenue, according to a person familiar with the matter. The brand is competing against LVMH, Moet Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, which has also been in talks to acquire the building at the corner of 58th Street. The person said, asking not to be named, citing private information. Okay, whatever. A spokesman for Chanel declined to comment, of course. Spokesperson for LVMH and landlord declined to comment, of course. Global luxury retailers have been competing to own buildings on Manhattan's Fifth Avenue in recent months. Gucci owner Caring said it purchased a building for, get this, get this, oh my God. What does that say? Nine, six, three? 
hundred <laughs> nine hundred sixty three million dollars earlier this year. Are we not in 2024? What do they mean earlier this year? As in this year, first quarter, I thought we heard tell that carrying stock was plummeting. I thought we heard tell that Gucci sales were plummeting. My friends, <laughs> let me tell you what this means. Let me tell you something. These brands are out of control. And the fact that they are competing with each other to find and land real estate is a testament to the future of increased prices coming. Please understand, if they're continuing to buy what they consider to be ideal placement for those who consume luxury in New York City, which is said to be one of the most places to have real estate, but why is everyone leaving New York City? Why is everyone leaving New York City? Because they can't afford it. So these luxury companies are saying, well, we're not catering to those people. We're catering to the people who are still here, who say they can afford to be here and shop at multiple locations around Louis Vuitton, aka build a network, build reputation, build a, um, a buying history, if you will. And that's who we're catering to. Understand, lovelies. <laughs> understand that means we're in for a, another journey with price hikes and price increases. And that's one of the reasons why I said, you know what? Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to stop everybody from messaging me right now. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Do not disturb. That means we are in for a price increase. We've seen Chanel doing it. Have we seen Gucci? Let me think about this. Gucci, I actually was going to do a video about some Gucci items that I had seen lately that I thought were kind of nice on trend. Um, probably I would not say worth the price, unfortunately, um, especially because I do think that, yeah, Gucci's prices like e y uh, e on YSL, like them has been on this incline that I'm not entirely sure is worth it. When we talk about bags being worth it, in my opinion, as somebody who's got the financial background, I'm sorry to tell you, but if I can't sell you down the road and make what I paid for you back or close to it, that is not worth it in my mind, in my opinion. So that's the reason why you do not see me unboxing everything there is under the sun is because at the end of the day, I look for what can I pass on to the next generation that will still have value. And while I could say that a speedy or uh, not, not the speedy, a speedy in canvas, a graceful MM could be passed on. At the end of the day, it's in canvas. And if we start saying, well, Louis Vuitton is starting to make higher end leathers and Hermes is starting to, is continuing to see a price increase in their quota bags, those are investments. Those are things that stand the test of time. Those, they're not in terms of stock market investments. Consider these like art. Consider it like art, my friends, okay? Art is something that luxury enthusiasts, people who are ultra rich buy in order to diversify their portfolio. So just consider it as that hello darling hello <laughs> saying hi to all my friends so so yes i did come off of Ban island i had been on break i would say all of january i would also say part of february probably all of february and then i saw some things happening in march or some things that were not available until march and april that and May are now becoming available. So I said, okay, I'm hopping off because I'm not interested in whatever future price increases are to come. I'm not interested. And so I just wanted to put that out there for those in the community, the luxury community who were wondering like why I would have a title label like this is because I read this article. I understand what it means at the end of the day. It just means that, you know, we're going to see, we're going to see this, these 
prices passed on to consumers. That's what it means. And then it says entities tied to Prada were behind the $835 million purchase of two buildings nearby, Bloomberg News reported. So there you have it, you guys. When we talk about price increases coming, this is an indicator. Consider that a warning sign down the road. If it doesn't hit this year, believe you me, it's coming. All right. I want to talk about one more video that I was watching, and it's talking about what's happening around in China, which I'm telling you what goes around comes around. So again, prepare ourselves. So D Flowers, hello, darling. A Canadian pension fund recently sold their almost vacant skyscraper downtown Manhattan for a single dollar. <laughs> Maybe these buildings are cheap right now. Hmm. That is an interesting thought to consider. But when I took a look at that article saying that Gucci just spent 900 million, Prada just spent 800 million, believe you me, Chanel and Louis Vuitton are not paying for those buildings for a dollar. Especially because we already saw the article talk about where they've already spent uh, around the world on real estate. We know we know it's millions. We know it. We know it's coming. So just don't be surprised and caught off guard with any um, price price increases being passed along to us as we see the elevation in the prices with the new products that are coming out, which by the way, feel free to drop your comments on whether or not you want us to talk a little bit about because I was in LV and I saw some new things. I would have to put a video together to, to be able to share what I saw. Um, but some of the shorts that I did do recently, we can also talk about, like, for example, I saw the Dauphine, the soft Dauphine. And um, one of our subscribers, one of our community members did ask if I was interested in that bag. And I said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the Dauphine is a good bag to invest in. Invest. I know we hate saying that word invest, but again, my definition is something that I spent money on right now that is worth more later. If I want that money back, I can get it back. Okay. Um, and even if you're investing in like real estate, you can lose your money if you don't pay your mortgage. If you invest in a deal and it goes bad because for whatever reason you thought someone was going to be able to sell something and they couldn't, you could lose all your money. Those are still investments. You could put your money in the stock market and lose all your money because the stocks go down. Companies fail all the time, go bankrupt. You could lose your money. Can you lose your money with your bags? Is it not good to diversify your artwork selection? This is how I consider it. I'm diversified. I want to be diversified. So one of the things you may have noticed me doing recently was selling a lot of bags and it's because I've been buying. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. So that'll be coming. But before we get into that, let me just show you, we got to talk about this, what's going on around the world, because I was just like, this can't be true. It says here, the Chinese are running out of money. The, and I said, that, that that's impossible. The Chinese running out of money is impossible. It's like us running out of money, impossible. <laughs> so Chinese run out of money, luxury sales plummet, Hermes, Chanel, Gucci. Why is not Louis Vuitton mentioned? It's really bad. I mean, I just can't sell them. Let me show you what my inventory looks like. I'll pick a few at random. This ADO bag, I bought it for 60,000 yuan, around 8,320 US dollars. And even after the price went up, I can't sell it for 90,000 yuan, which is 12,480 US dollars. This Hermes Constance ostrich skin, I got it for 100,000 yuan, which is around 13,800 US dollars. Now my daughter's already two, and I still haven't sold the bag. This Hermes Veroch Chin Mini, I bought for This man said, this is a Chinese reseller, mind you. And he just said, I've bought this Hermes bag. Now my daughter is two and I still can't sell it. Two years basically have gone by since he bought that bag and can't sell it. I thought that was so funny. I was just like, sir. <laughs> for 40,000 yuan, around 5,500 US dollars. And there was one going for 35,000 yuan. I bought that too. And even one for 30,000 yuan. I took that as well. None of them have sold. This Hermes crocodile skin wallet, 
I'm just asking for a bit over 20,000 yen, which is around 2,773 US dollars. It is already such a cheap price. I don't know why I can't sell it. It just won't go. Judging from the Hermes bag secondhand market. Okay. The other thing I can't stand when I watch this video is uh, it's not Hermes, it's Hermes. But one of the things that stood out to me in this section is how this reseller basically scoops up bags, popular bags that people want in order to oversell them later, which we've heard is a thing. But now when I saw this video, I realized that thing was true and real. And it really made me think about my own journey with Hermes and the reason why I was not interested in going to a reseller is number one, I could not be certain it would not be a fake for all that money. And number two, one of the things I noticed about resellers is they ha seem to have all of the quota bags in all of the, co the colors people want or people may not want, but the ones that people really want. They seem to have the yellows, the blues, the greens, the purples, the exotics that cost tons of money that I don't really understand where people would wear those things. Like, so that's another thing that I have been thinking about on my spending freeze has been the dream life versus the reality life and making sure that the things that I am picking up are things that I can use real time as well as with as well as over time, something that will last and have longevity. So that's what you should also be thinking about. I think, I think, I think. And even when I say that, I point to this Red Speedy as, and I feel like we can still have fun. We can still have fun with the, the money that we spend on these luxury purchases um, by finding the colors that appeal to us. But one, I think like the, the most important thing that stood out to me with that video and looking at that reseller and thinking about the resale market and a lot of the, a lot of some of the observations that I'm noticing with the resale market is I feel like it's just best to be patient right now than to search. One of the things that I was not doing on Van Island on my spending freeze was not searching for luxuries and they were finding me. The things that I wanted were finding me. And because I wasn't searching and spending, I had the money ready for the things that I wanted. Also, I've been decluttering and getting rid of a lot of things that I have not been using. Like I just sold um, my balloon because I'm now using my Speedy. And when I thought of my balloon, it was a bag that I love to use in the winter time when it rained. It was sort of like a really good all weather bag. And the Speedy is the same size. It's a 25. It's an all weather bag. It's pre-treated leather. It holds a lot more. I can wear it year round if I want to. So I started to let go of some of the things that I felt were no longer serving me. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. So let's get back into this. Let's get back into the Chinese are running out of money. Are we running out of money? I mean, I don't, I don't believe this. Market situation in the video. All right, Chinese let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Isn't bustling. Valentine's Day for luxury goods is decreasing. This trend of rapidly declining purchasing power began last year. Today's May the 20th, China's unofficial Valentine's Day. Let's head over to Shenzhen Bay's Mixies and see how many people are buying luxury goods. You can see there's no line at the Dior's counter, not many people lining up at Louis Vuitton, and Fendi's counter isn't busy either. The jewelry store, Shimet, isn't bustling. No lines for CL's red bottoms, Monet's bags, Audemar Pichuet watches, or Van Cleef's and Arpel's necklaces. It's pretty quiet. Not many folks inside Balenciaga. Burberry's empty. No queues at Cartier. Nothing at Lowy. Goyard's not busy either. What's going on? Is nobody buying luxury goods anymore? Oddly enough, there's no line at Chanel. Looks like the economy's not doing great. 
No need to queue for Hermes. Just came out of the mall and noticed folks aren't shopping for luxury goods like before. Used to be long lines at every luxury counter, but now, aside from a few people at Louis Vuitton, hardly anyone's queuing. However, the decline in consumer purchasing power is not a worldwide phenomenon. Some developed countries are actually seeing growth in this area. I heard an economist say yesterday, he did some research in Japan and found loads of people queuing at luxury stores, but not in Shanghai's luxury stores. I didn't believe it until I went to check it out myself today. Shanghai's luxury shopping centers are really empty, and it's supposed to be peak season, with Christmas, New Year's, and Chinese New Year coming up. Business is so slow. I haven't seen this in old. Every lunch for the past two months, I've been eating Huel Instant Milk Cups, and it's changed the game for me. It's as easy as it over a decade. When you look okay, at so this guy talks a little bit about how there were no lines in the mall anywhere across China, but when you look on other regions outside of that area, there in other developed countries, there has been an increase seen in luxury spending aka they said japan i feel like the us i feel like the us is spending right now too but they're saying china that no one is spending money in china and i want to i want to say i want to tell you an observation that that i made in that video that i don't think you guys saw it i don't i think i skipped ahead but this guy, or I had seen a video where someone had pulled out the fact that they had several Himalayan Birkins, okay? I think this was in China. <laughs> and then I watched another video where um, a wrestler, someone famous, someone famous had bought a Himalayan Birkin. And he said, there were only two ever made ever and he had one of them and he said the other one belonged to jamie shua not even kim kardashian had the himalayan bergen and so when i started seeing these himalayans pop up in china on the video i was just asking myself how who's telling the truth here how is that possible who is it really that there were only two made have more been made somehow <laughs> are they all real <laughs> guys guys look just be patient with yourselves and whatever purchases you're trying to get because i tell you and i guarantee you and because it's not worth spending the money only to find out later on you've been scammed okay i'm just telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you the other thing that I noticed when they were talking a little bit about the mall was empty, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, is it because it's like a weekday? Are people working? Um, is it really a weekend? What are the what's what's the conditions? You know, has it been raining outside? Do people normally come outside? Is it free? Like what's going on? I wasn't just normally assuming that people were not shopping. So just take it with a grain of salt. OK, that's all I'm going to say. Um, so that's what I really wanted to talk about today were these three articles and, um, I really didn't have anything else on the docket. So if you guys wanted to stick around and you wanted to talk about anything, feel free. I feel like, let me see, can I invite you all? I should start doing this more. I wish I had invited people up to join me, but if you guys have any questions about, um, sort of like, not that I'm a financial advisor, but just questions about purchases, questions about whether or not you feel like you're on track with your own personal financial development, feel free to reach out. Let me know. I'm happy to talk about it here. I'm happy to talk about it privately if, if you need anonymity. But at the end of the day, I want us all to thrive. You know, I feel like I feel like that's just not something that a lot of people are able to even think about right now. Um, and I don't think that's right. So that's what uh, that's all I have. That's all I got. You guys, you guys got anything else? Anything else? Want to talk? You guys are like sitting there saying, Kanisha, open up those boxes. No, you will have to wait. You will have to wait and find out. And I'm really sorry that it's been taking me forever to make these videos. Um, but one thing I will say about them is I'm trying to get to it. So I think this one, what I'll say is I'll start giving some hints. This one I think is for my Mother's Day present. 
This one, I think, wait, this one, I think, is my birthday present. Birthday present. And then this one, this big one, you can't see. Uh, this one, I think, is, um, <laughs> there's no reason. <laughs> there's no reason. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I wanted it. That's the why. That's why for that one. <laughs> And I had to sell some things to get it. <laughs> All right, D Flowers, what did you say? Drop your questions and comments, my love. So do you think some people are re reaching for their luxury less because of the current financial and crimes that's on the street? <sighs> reaching for their luxury less. Hmm, I don't know if that's happening. People are moving into quiet luxury, aren't they? Aren't they moving into quiet luxury? Not reaching for less, but reaching away from the loud luxury, the the logos. Isn't that what's happening? I think that's more what's happening. Crime. Now, crime on the streets. Hmm, where do you live? So let's see, I went to New York. What did I wear? I had my utility phone sleeve and I took my graceful MM and I took my Alexander Wang backpack and I live near Philly. If I'm down in Philly, I'm not wearing a Chanel flap. I'm wearing maybe like something on a radar. Again, something small, utility phone sleeve bun pouch, fold me pouch, denim piece, something a little bit more low key. Absolutely. Because I'm not trying to make myself obvious or to be a target, but I'm still going to reach for my pieces. Now, I have actually recently bought some contemporary pieces that I want to talk a little bit about. And I think there's just, I have a different reason for my contemporary pieces than I think others in luxury. I think some of the conversations I've been hearing from others in luxury, for example, from Connor's The Closet by Connor, um, Autumn Beckman, Dawn Loves Couture's, um, some of my faves, some of my friends. My understanding is, you know, the conversation around is coach luxury um, and things like that. Portland leather goods is luxury, a mindset around the quality of the material is what makes it luxury and not the price. And I was just like, y'all, a luxury is something almost unattainable. Okay. I think that everybody should be entitled to how they define luxury and what they consider to be luxury because I myself have bought some Portland leather goods. I've had coach in the past, but I think luxury is something almost out of reach. Okay. That is what is a luxury. And I think that you need to have money to be able to acquire anything that is something you'll be able to further pass on down the road. Like luxury is almost in my mind synonymous with generational wealth. And I think like, again, you have to forgive me, you guys, like when my channel is called mindful luxury for a reason, you know, my motto is we're all meant luxury thriving and we all need to sort of reset our thinking elevate our thinking, evolve our thinking, whatever, because times are changing. These brands are changing things and we should change too. Like, come on. So I don't think like some of those brands are luxury um, because it's almost too attainable. Not to mention that I think some of us feel that if you can acquire some of these items in outlets, 
is that truly luxury? Almost like saying Louis Vuitton would be not considered luxury if we started to see them in outlets. But then I found their, their outlet online, guys. I found their online outlet 24-7. And I said to myself, why did I not know about you before? Because one of the things, the bags that I have was on the site, the carry it. I saw that on 24-7, 24s.com. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this could be another alternative path to buying Louis Vuitton. Who knows? So more to explore there. Uh, fun Fop 3. I just purchased a trio toilet tree pouches. Have you seen them in stores yet? Are these the ones with the different colors inside? Fun Fop 3? The pink ones? Because I saw these and I... I don't want to dissuade you, my love. If you want to, go for it. What I will say is I... I think about this trio like the Kirigami pouches, you know, you know how they released the Kirigami pouches and then people started selling them piece by piece. <laughs> it's like to me, it was almost like people were making up excuses for why they wanted to have buy the set and they just wanted one piece. <laughs> and they're like, I'm just going to buy all of them instead of waiting to buy whichever piece that they wanted on like the next market on eBay or something. Like, would it not be cheaper that way, guys? I don't get it. Or are you guys buying it in order to sell the pieces that you don't want? Or are you really going to keep the pieces? That's the question. Are you going to keep it? Buy it. If you don't have it, buy it. Because I saw someone who was like, I have the old toiletry pouch sets and I'm buying the pink sets too. And I was just like, okay, well, why? But then um, this was also the reason why a lot of people were like, I'm not buying the new toiletry on chain. I already have the old toiletry on toiletry pouch and I converted it myself, but I never had the old toiletry pouch. So I said, well, I want it. But now that I have it, there's no way I want the pink one. And you guys know I love pink. You know it. But I'm not going to be one of those people. I'm not the person. Don't come here. I'm not the person who's going to justify why I need it just because it's new and just because it's pink and just because I love it. <laughs> I'm not justifying that. No, I don't need it. It's beautiful. Tell me if you get it. Let's see here. D Flowers, Palm Springs for Coachella. I know that's right, girl. Have fun. I've seen less luxury than usual. Portland, Oregon area. I feel like I'll be targeted if wearing anything noticeable. Oh my gosh. No, you got to do what's comfortable for you. Mm -mm. If that's what your observations are, go with your gut instinct. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. Like, but then if you travel, what if you travel? Then do you have the opportunity to wear your luxuries? Because that would be like what I would be thinking about is not me spending all this money and not using it. How am I going to use it? <laughs> so that would be important. Oh, I love the toiletry on chain too. I love the toiletry on chain because it came with the T15 understand I looked at that like what a deal <laughs> what a deal what a steal and everybody was like no Kanisha girl you needed to have bought that 10 years ago and I was just like 10 years ago what what <laughs> 10 years ago I didn't even know <laughs> no no now it's all good it's upgraded to my standards <laughs> you know I'm just playing They've got the chain on there for me and I get the T15 and the, the D rings are there for me to hook it onto other, any other strap that I want. Thank you, Lee Fasan, for doing all the work for me. You guys know I'm lazy. I even go back to work. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am just playing. I love to have fun with my channel. In case you are new here, in case you are new here, I'm Kanisha. Welcome to my Mindful Luxury Lifestyle channel where we have fun here and secure the bag and our coins. We're happy. We get both. Okay. The only sell, sell item, older items on 24S, LB never goes on sale. <laughs> That's not true. Don't say that. I just bought these shoes. I just bought these. I just bought the Comfort Flat Mules. And were they old? I mean, oh, I know what you're saying. Out of season. Can we, let's be more, let's be more specific. <laughs> let's be more precise. <laughs> so 
So I bought them and I think that they came, let's see here. So right now they've got the denim ones out and I think these maybe were last year, last season. Yeah. 2023 is not old. It's not like it's 2022 or something. It's not like it's 20. It's not like it's 2003. <laughs> um, but I also like it more and it was half price. Wait, it was $6.98. Isn't that half price? Hold on. Okay. The ones out right now that I had just bought were eleven ten divided by two, five fifty five. Okay, minus six ninety eight. All right, one hundred forty three dollars, like forty percent. So I felt like that was worth it. I mean, they're just as comfortable. I, <laughs> you guys crack me up. Does that mean that we don't buy on resale if we, if we don't shop on on the twenty four S? We don't we don't go shopping on resale. Like, what does that even mean? Because I'm shopping, if I can find a deal and it fits my style and it's comfortable, because believe you me, I'm looking for comfort because I had, I've had a bone spur removed from my foot before. So I know what foot surgery is all about. There's no way. Like, I felt like that was such a great deal. I have to go, but it was so nice to see you. Bye, girl. Bye, pop, pop. And you bought them at the price they were at the time they were selling them in the store. Definitely worth it. Oh, yeah. See, I think that's great. Like, that's how we should be able to get deals is. I think that some of the things like the carry it, I think that is a few years old because I must have bought that. Let me see. I have it on my list. When did I buy that? That's definitely a few year, a few years old. I know that for sure. But I still love it. I bought that in 2020. That's not that old. 2020 is four years old. And when it was last on the site, it was $2,030. But when I purchased it, I purchased it for $1,700 before the price increase. And when I saw it on 24S, it was $1,700. A little bit of savings. I mean... So that's like $300, guys. What are you talking about? Guys, you better take those sales. <laughs> you better take those savings. <laughs> 2023, things are starting to appear. Oh, see? V. Giles and I are on it. V. Giles is probably on it more because I'm trying not to look. Don't tell me that, girl. <laughs> Don't tell me that, girl. <laughs> Um, all right. Now you guys, I'm curious, 2023, like that's not old. That's just last season. That's not old at all. So I'm curious now. All right. What other questions? What other questions? Any more questions for me before I hop off? Okay. It was great to talk with everybody. Definitely feel free to join my lives. I have been doing lives I don't know, guys, the videos, it's been really difficult to find the time to edit right now. It's been very, very, very difficult. And I like to edit my own videos. So I, I feel like I have such a backlog and it feels terrible. <laughs> it feels terrible. Um, but please stick with me. Um, stick with me. Share help encourage me to get back out here in a video. Um, and I will do my best. Just been very, very hectic. But it was good to hop on for a little bit and have a conversation. And I will talk to you guys soon. Until the next time. Until the next time. Bye, D flowers. Take care, guys.